Houston. We will be hearing from Coach Kelvin Sampson first, followed by our student athlete. We'll be getting started in a few minutes as we wait for activities to conclude on the court. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation as our coach and student athlete will not be able to see you. Thank you. Welcome to the NCAA Elite Eight post-game press conference featuring Houston. We will be hearing from Coach Kelvin Sampson first, followed by our student athlete. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation. Thank you. Welcome to the NCAA Elite Eight post-game press conference featuring Houston. We'll be hearing from Coach Kelvin Sampson first, followed by our student athlete. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation as our student athlete and coach will not be able to see you. Thank you. Welcome to the NCAA Elite Eight post-game press conference featuring Houston. We will be hearing from Coach Kelvin Sampson first, followed by Dejan Giroux. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation. Thank you.
All right. Thank you all for participating tonight. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Sampson and then go to questions. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go to those questions. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Wayne Tinkle and the uh, Oregon State Beavers for a uh, tremendous year. What they did the last um, few weeks, um, beating Colorado, Oregon, UCLA, um, Tennessee, Oklahoma State, Loyola Marymount, I'm sorry, Loyola Chicago, uh, my fault. Um, those are good teams. Those teams beat good teams. That, that, that proves how good they are. Um, so hats off to Wayne, a great guy. Um, my, I, uh, Kellen and Lauren, my two kids, were born in Montana. I coached in Montana, and, and Wayne uh, was a great player at the University of Montana. When, we, when I talked to Wayne before the game, I said, you know who would love to watch this game tonight is Judd Heathcote. Uh, Judd gave me my start at Michigan State, and, and we're, Wayne and I are both uh, part of uh, uh, Judd's coaching tree. So I was thinking about Judd tonight. Um, but proud of my team. You know, we, we were really locked in defensively uh, on what we wanted to do. Um, Oregon State, we knew was going to come back and make a run. Um, we got a little bit um, non-aggressive against the one-three-one, but they they made it like that. You know, not many teams can put a seven-footer at the top of the key and take away your interior pass. They forced us to go um, slot to slot, corner to corner, and and our guys got a little bit um, um, stale against that thing. But I, I wasn't as disappointed in that as I was uh, concerned about our defense at the other end. You know, we kept. Uh, they kept gashing us, and we'd been so good for so long. But when I called the uh, uh, timeout, one thing you have to remind uh, young people, uh, young men in these situations, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to miss the shot. You certainly can't be afraid to take it. Um, and so we, we put Quentin in that other uh, corner and uh, put him on the same side as Dejan, and we tried to get the ball from Marcus to Dejan to Q because we thought we could get the shot. but. Uh, they're good at running that 1-3-1. One, one. We we've seen 1-3-1s one, a lot uh, this year, but uh, not, not ones that look like that. But it's not supposed to be easy, you know, and i um, proud of these kids, proud of the heart, proud of uh, battling through so many things this year, uh, whether it was uh, injuries or transfers or um, um, tough, uh, a tough loss here or there. But for this team to be 28-3 and three and going to the Final Four, um, this is uh, one of the greatest accomplish accomplishments I've been around. And I have this group of players and this staff, uh, everyone on this staff, all the players uh, to thank for it. I'm glad they let me go along, for, with, uh, go along on the ride with them. It's, it's been a fun ride with this group. All right, we will now go to questions from the media. Again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Our first question comes from Joseph Duarte with the Houston Chronicle. Hey, uh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, Kelvin, you're, you're out there at the end, you're, you're waving to the crowd, you're seeing your guys dancing, all the emotions. In hindsight, seven years later, are these the moments that you envision for your program, for you, your family, just to get to, get to this point? Um, I, I thought we would win, uh, Joseph. I thought we could win. I, I did. Um, and, and, you know, we had to get through the first year. That was important um, because then we could start building. Um, the wins were all pluses that first year. The losses mean nothing, meant nothing. Um, I, I probably cost us a couple games um, trying to discipline kids. Uh, I remember one kid in particular, I held him out of a few games um, down, the, down the stretch because I, the thing I told that bunch that year is our program is going to be more important than any of you. Don't ever think that you're more important than this program. 
Uh, I, I've always believed that about every program that I've uh, been in charge of. And once we got through the first year, we just started adding pieces. And we did it brick by brick. We weren't in a hurry. We didn't try to cut any corners. We did it brick by brick. Um, uh, the staff, um, Kellen was an absolute um, house. Alvin, Alvin took care of uh, Houston. Um, and he, he was significant in building this program. Um, once Qantas got in, uh, we started, you know, picking off this kid and that kid. But um, we said no to a lot of kids because I just didn't think that they would fit our culture. Um, we said no to a lot of kids that people would think that's a great get or that's now you've got great recruits. I don't care about great recruits. Never been my deal. I wanted kids that I could coach, um, kids that would uh, be coached, uh, that would be able to survive some tough days, some hard days, and would I could get them to play for each other. So I, I, I knew we were going to be on that, on that, um, on that route. Um, but to get to the Final Four, I, I think each year that went by it got closer. I always thought we could, but we we had to climb the ladder. You know, Joe Castiglione, who's one of my best friends, AD at Oklahoma, sent me a ladder. Uh, in a big UPS or FedEx box when I first got to Houston. I didn't know what it was. But he had a letter in there, and he talked about uh, the three consecutive uh, Big 12 championship, tournament championships we won while I was at Oklahoma. And he said, Coach, Coacher, he always called me Coacher, Coacher, I hope you get to use this ladder a lot at University of Houston. And always, appreci always appreciate the, s the symbolism behind it and how symbolic it is. And what that means is every ladder represents a step along the way. Our academic people who does such a great job of putting our kids in position to graduate, um, uh, our compliance people, our athletic director and his administration, uh, our president, Tillman Fatita, who have supported us financially and, and helped us uh, gain footing with the rest of the conference, uh, our trainers, uh, our strength coaches, our assistant coaches, managers, players, everybody's part of the ladder. You know, and we're, all, we're all kind of the same. We're just part of this program trying to build it. And, you know, last, two years ago, uh, we lost to Cincinnati in the conference championship game, a game I felt like we could have won. And then we lost to Michigan, a game I felt like we should have won. And, and, that, and those games, told me, we're getting close. We just got to keep swinging. We got to keep getting here. You know, you just got to keep winning. You got to keep getting kids to believe. Um, and that's what we did. You know, we lost to Michigan, and that was a gut punch. It, that hurt a lot. Um, and we came back the following year, and COVID hit us, but that team was playing its best basketball at the end of the year. You know, Quentin was finally comfortable. Caleb Mills was playing good. Um, Fabian had just had 18 points, 14 rebounds against Precious Achua and when we beat Memphis. So I thought that team had a chance to make a run last year until it was taken from us. And then we came back this year. Uh, Nate Hinton kept his name in the draft. Fabian tore his ACL. Caleb transferred. Uh, we lost Chris. So we lost four starters. But the, ones, the, the kids that were there believed. Uh, and they knew the staff believed. So we were getting closer. And... Um, uh, the teams that were the teams that were ranked all year that that got got most of the uh, uh, credit for being great teams were great teams uh, Illinois and Ohio State all those teams but you know we just kept working and kept getting better and um, you know when the brackets came out I told our kids we got a chance to do something special here let's go one and zero one and zero against Cleveland State one and zero against uh, um, uh, Rutgers, 1-0 against Syracuse, and now 1-0 against Oregon State. And, and next Saturday, we'll try to go 1-0 again. That's, that's how we approach things. All right, our next question comes from Myron Metcalf. Calvin, in that first year as an assistant with Judd Heathcote, what were some of the lessons that he taught you that you still well, apply to a season like this? Yeah, it's a, a grad assistant, Myron. I was 22 years old. I didn't know whether I was on foot or horseback, and Judd made sure I didn't know if I was on foot or horseback. Being a, being a grad assistant for Judd is kind of like being a glorified manager. I was scared to death of him. He intimidated me. 
But he believed in me too. He, he, he believed in me. I don't know what it was, but I would never have gotten to Montana Tech. Judge, Judge freshman year in college was at Montana Tech. He helped me get there. Um, and then Judd graduated from Washington State University. If it were not for Judd, I wouldn't have been the head coach at Washington State. So I owe Judd a lot. I think what, what uh, Judd taught me was that um, it's okay to be unique. Be, be yourself. Uh, a, lot of peop- a lot of assistant coaches fail trying to be like the guy they work for. Uh, I was a grad assistant, no, nothing more. But I, I learned from everybody there. Um, uh, Magic Johnson was always the first guy in the gym. I, I, I got a tweet from uh, Magic t- uh, tonight. It, it, we go all the way back to 1978, 79, 80, uh, some, in, in those years. Uh, but Judd was unique. He was a hard worker. He, he came from uh, humble beginnings. Um, but his, his greatest uh, strength was uh, his, abil- his ability to get the most out of people. But the guy that influenced me the most, that, that I would give the most credit to, was my father, uh, John W. Sampson. I, I wish he and my mother were here tonight to see this. Um, um, the year we went to the final, the last time we went to the final four, he had, he had a brain aneurysm uh, the night before we played Arizona um, in, the, in the Sweet 16. My mother and I stayed in the hospital, I think, to 4, 4.30 in the morning waiting for him to come out of surgery. And then I went back and got with the team and then played Arizona that afternoon. Um, and then um, he didn't get to go to the Final Four that year because of his surgery. But he, if, if he could have, he would have. Uh, and, I, and, and I wish they were here tonight. I know they're looking down. So that's a good thing. All right. And then we have time for one more quick question from Greg Bailey with KTRK. <laughs> Hey, Kelvin, congratulations. You, you said you. to us, so, yeah, absolutely. You've said to us so many times, I'm so happy my players got to experience that, a, yeah. a full crowd at Fertitta, yeah. a, a conference championship. How happy are you for these young people who have earned this right through hard work to do something that's going to live on for generations at U of H? That's what it's all about, Greg. It's all about the players. Um, it's all about them. That this, this, this memory will last them a, la- a lifetime. They'll tell their grandchildren about this. Um, their mothers and fathers and their families and friends are watching them and experiencing it from afar. But these guys put in the work. Um, they all have their story. They've all had to battle through adversity uh, to come together as a team. You know, we may not have the brightest lights, but, but our lights shine as, as, as bright as anybody else's because it's all about team. You know, Dejan drove by himself is pretty good, but he's a lot better together. Quentin Grimes, good player by himself, but he's a lot better uh, together with this, this, the rest of these kids. So um, we've, taken a, we've taken a group of kids to get them to believe, and they've accomplished something that, um, that they will, no matter what happens this weekend, is something that nobody will – Um, can take from them, and they'll always be known as a Final Four participant. They played in the Final Four. They earned it, too. I mean, they earned it. Those three games in Fort Worth, the four games here, um, you know, every season's going to be ups and downs. That's why the 1976 Coach Knight team is is the last one to go undefeated. Everybody's going to lose games. It's how how you um, bounce back from those games. And this team did it the right way because they're high character kids, high character kids. High character kids let you coach them. High character kids overcome adversity. Um, And they're usually mature. I have a very mature bunch. I love them to death. I'm so happy for them. They are why why you coach. And um, um, it's, it's, it's been a thrill being with these kids this year. Well said. Thank you, Coach, for your time today. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We will be joined momentarily by Dejan Giroux. At this time, please use the razor lower hand as necessary.
All right, we are now, no, we are now joined by Dejan Giroux. Again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. All right, we are going to start with Andy Yanis with the Cougar. Hey, John. Uh, first of all, man, just, just take me through. What are you feeling? What was the like once that final buzzer finally sounded? You say, I, I can't hear you. Take me back. Uh, what, I mean, what was it like? Where were the emotions when that final buzzer finally sounded? Uh, just, you know, the relief of, you know, all the hard work we have put in to, you know, get to this point and, you know, just being counted out and doubted. Um, you know, just to kind of prove the world, prove the world that we belong here. Um, you know, they tried to say about the, you know, us playing double C's, but, you know, them double C's also um, had to beat a single C, you know, in order to get to this point. So, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just very grateful. All right. Our next question comes from Brian Smith with the Houston Chronicle. Hey, John, you guys talk all the time about the culture of this team and Kelvin was just praising all the players. How, how much did that culture, that team collective, allow you guys to find a way to win this game or reach the final four? Um, well, you know, Oregon State, great team. You know, they, they, they fought back. Um, fought back and, you know, kind of had, had us on our heels. But, you know, we were able to get back to our roots um, and rebound the ball, um, play defense. Um, like I said, great team, you know, just – just following, you know, just following the scout report and, you know, just believing in our culture. You know, we, we started to play, play harder than them, you know, the, the, the final couple of minutes. And, you know, we were able to pull away and make free throws. And, you know, we, now we're here. All right. Our next question comes from Lucas Weiss with The Undefeated. Hey, Dejan, congratulations on the win and advancing to the Final Four. I'm just curious what your thoughts are with you and, and your teammate and friend Bryce and being both being from New Orleans, both going to the same high school and man. now both in the final four. Oh man, I can't even explain the feeling. Um, you know, growing up with Bryson, um, you know, we met in the ninth grade. Um, we'd been through everything together. Um, you know, UMass, um, left UMass, um, attended Big Spring for a year, came to Houston, and that is our third year at Houston. Um you know, it's like a dream come true. Um, we always talked about this, um, you know, being somewhere as a package deal and, you know, to not being a Final Four together. That's just a that's just a story that, you know, is worth telling. I um, feel like we definitely deserve a 30 for 30 for this. Um, man, I'm just I'm just very happy to have him on my side as my best friend. And, um, you know, the feeling the feeling is, is unexplainable. All right. Our next question will come from Chris Baldwin. Hey, Dejan, when did you first start thinking a moment like this could be possible at Houston? And what, what does it mean, you know, to do this for, with Coach Sampson as well? Um, honestly, um, when that was, two, two years ago with, um, with Corey Davis, Galen Robinson, you know, that group, um, I thought it was possible. But, you know, our hopes were shocked when uh, Tyler Hero um, knocked down that three. Uh, he's a great player to, you know, knock us out. But... Uh, even l last year, I thought we had a shot if the NCAA tournament, you know, was to be played. But, you know, this year, this whole year, just, you know, just believing in my teammates. Um, those guys believe in me. Um, always say, you know, they're behind me with whatever. And um, I'm grateful to be around this group and to have Coach Sampson leading us. Um, man, he's a great, great coach. And, you know, to get this win on his, on, on his thousand game, man, that's just something, you know, just – just work talking about and just um, work living. And I'm happy. I, I'm happy. I'm a part of that. You know, I'm happy. He's my coach. I'm happy. I came back and you know the story is still being written. And uh, we're in the final four now. All right. Our next question comes from John Title. John Title from HoopsHD.com. Uh, Dejan, I think of you as a defensive player because you were named conference defensive player of the year, but the last two games you're almost averaging a triple double. So how have you been able to balance all the different aspects of your game over the past couple of games, if not month? Um, you know, my teammates, my coaches, my family, you know, just always tell me how gifted I am. And, you know, I just go out there every night and just give them my all and, you know, just focus on the little things and just let everything, let everything else happen. Um, you know, we try to focus on the defensive end first and, you know, just let offense take care of itself. Um, 
you know, just playing my game. Just, you know, like I said, I love seeing my teammates score the ball. So, you know, just trying to distribute, facilitate. Um, you know, if I'm open, I take my shots. Um, I rebound. But, you know, just, just playing within myself. Um, just, just playing my game, really. All right. Our next question comes from Mark Berman. Hey, John, Mark Berman from Fox in Houston. You, you, can you get your arms around what you guys have just done? I mean, you just did something that hadn't been done here in 37 years. I ain't even. I, four I'm, decades. You, you're making history. What do you think? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I um, the emotions, um, emotion hasn't hasn't even set in yet. Honestly, uh, still feel like you know, still feel like we playing the game. Um, I think it'll set in once we get to the hotel and settle down. Um, I, my adrenaline's still rushing. Um, man, I'm just I'm just grateful to be here. Um, like I said, I have my fallen angels leading me. Um, I'm doing this for my brother Trish. I'm just man, I'm just grateful. Um, I'm happy, you know, to you know, bring the excitement back to Houston and, you know, continue with the Five Slammer Jamma did and, you know, just to bring the excitement to the university and I just, I just love everything about it. I love Houston. I love University of Houston. I love my coaches. I love my teammates. And, you know, we're here. But the emotions hasn't even set in yet. All right. Our next question comes from Austin Pedaleo. Dejan, when you think about all this, you know, in 2018-19, you guys lose in the Sweet 16. Last year, you don't have the tournament. Now you're in the Final Four. I mean, you said it hasn't set in yet, but, I mean, mm-hmm. Just thinking about it, I mean, to get to this point, how gratifying is that? Man, um, it's like a dream come true. You know, growing up watching the Final Four, watching college basketball, you know, you always think about getting to this point, you know, seeing former players um, on TV um, do this. You know, like, like I said, as a kid, I'm, I'm watching TV growing up. Um, I'm like, I hope I'll be here one day. And, man, I'm really here. Um, never thought I'd see this day, but... You know, God has other plans for, for people. And, you know, God has a plan for me and my teammates. Um, we're here for a reason. Man, I, <laughs> the emotions ain't, the emotions ain't hasn't set in yet, like I said. I'm just grateful, man. All right, we will go back to Myron Metcalf. John, what was it like celebrating after the game without sort of the traditional NCAA tournament vibe? Oh. Uh, what was that whole feeling like? Um, you know, it would have been way, way litter if, you know, the if COVID wasn't here, but, you know, COVID's here and, you know, it's restrictions, but, um, you know, the Houston family still came out and gave us the support, gave us the love. They were loud. And, you know, just to celebrate, you know, with them, also your family in the stands, um, you get to see them. Um, you know, you just have to, you just have to live life the way it is right now. And you just have to be grateful, you know, for what you can do. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to be here. And, um, you know, just just to be here while, while COVID's here. Um, control what you can control, and we're controlling what we can control. Um, and I, I'm grateful. That, that That's it. I'm grateful. Uh, we're in the Final Four with, you know, one of the best coaches ever. Um, love my teammates, and, you know, we're here. Awesome. And our final question comes from Joseph Duarte with the Houston Chronicle. Dejan, when you look back, yeah, you know, when you look back at how everything has gone, and and Coach Sampson's sort of that that message every time about this can happen, that this dream can become a reality. What what do you remember about those early days when maybe there was you know I don't know if there was doubt, but but you he always told the same message. Um, you know, it's never never really was doubt. Just you know, following his plan and you know. The plan he, he he set in place for us just, you know, going out there every night, playing hard, and letting our culture take care of a lot of games, which our culture did today. Uh, like I say, Oregon State uh, fought back, and, you know, our culture took over. Um, we got on the office of glass. Um, we we got extra possessions. Um, and, you know, we work on that every day in practice. Um, all them sprints in June, July, um, we do it to, to be here in March, and, you know, it was all worth it. Awesome. Thank you, Dejan, for your time. Appreciate y'all. And that is it for tonight. A full transcript will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. 
You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.